Russia embraced the war in 1914 under the rule of Tsar Nicholas II. Enthusiasm went away in 1915 when German soldiers attacked the Russians, resulting in several victories for the Germans. A result of the revolution of 1905 was weak leadership. The Dumas became extremely critical of the Tsars. In 1915, the progressive bloc called for a new government, causing politician Nicholas II to temporarily disband the Duma. The Tsar then announced that he was leaving, with his wife Alexandra in charge. She dismissed loyal politicians and turned to Rasputin. He was murdered in 1916 to end rumors of being Alexander's lover. Defeat in 1916 against the Austrians caused mass runaway from the troops. In 1917, protests arose causing the Tsar to open fire on the crowd. The soldiers refused and joined the revolution. The Duma called for a provisional government on March 12, 1917. Three days later, Nicholas abdicated. The Russian Revolution of 1917 brought into power the provisional government, which promptly introduced freedom of speech and assembly and lift the Tsarist restrictions on minorities. The provisional government came into being on March 14, 1917. In the capital, Petrograd, the provisional government was first led by Radzianko and was formed in response to the fear that the old Tsarist government in Petrograd would call in the frontline troops to put down the rebellion that had occurred in the city. Duke Michael refused to take on the crown after the abdication of Nicholas II. The provisional government became the de facto government in Russia. It was to last for eight months. It was immediately recognized as a legitimate government of Russia by the Allies. The provisional government kept Russia in the war, the huge judgment error they made. The Duma had always been a chamber for discussion, but never in a position to make policies and carry them out. The old props of the Tsarist regime crumbled away. Laws were passed to promise Russia a new era. Universal suffrage, Polish independence, equality for all people, and fair government elections. The lack of unity led to the resign of Radzianko. Prince Lvov replaced him. Kerensky and Lvov clashed over peasant land. Kerensky became leader of provisional government in July, after Lvov resigned in May. Lenin called for land to be given to peasants, an end to the war, complete power to the Soviets, and bread for the city workers. Lenin found revolutionary faith in Marx and socialism. The three ideas were central to him. One, capitalism could be destroyed only by violent revolution and denounced all revolutionist theories of a peaceful evolution of socialism. Two, under certain conditions, a socialist revolution was possible even in relatively backward countries like Russia. Three, he believed that at any given moment, revolution was determined more by human leadership than by vast historical laws, leading to his third idea, the necessity of a highly disciplined workers' party which would be controlled by intellectuals. At meetings of the Russian Socialist Democratic Labor Party in 1903, Lenin demanded a small disciplined elitist party while his opponents wanted a more democratic party, and the party split into the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. Lenin saw the war as a product of imperialistic rivalries and as a marvelous opportunity for class war and socialist upheaval. Since propaganda and internal subversion were accepted weapons for total war, the German government provided Lenin and colleagues with a safe passage across Germany and back into Russia in 1917. Arriving on April 3rd, Lenin attacked at once and rejected all cooperation with the bourgeois provisioned government of the liberals and moderate socialists. Attempt by the Bolsheviks to seize power in July collapsed, and although he was charged with being a German agent, conspiracy against Krensky and his commander-in-chief, General Lavar Kornilor, which resulted in Kornilor's leading an attack against the provisional government. Krensky had lost all credit with the army, the only force that might have saved him, and the democratic government in Russia. In the summer, the Bolsheviks greatly increased their membership from 50,000 to 240,000. They were led by Leon Trotsky, who was a Lenin supporter. Trotsky convinced the Soviets to military committee with him as leader. November 6, they seized the government buildings and declared Lenin as head of the government. The Bolsheviks gave absolute leadership, which was very much needed, and appealed to the workers and soldiers. A peasant revolution swept across Russia, which led Lenin to mandate land reform because of the peasants. Popular unrest spread to the cities, causing local Soviets or committees to form and demand control over individual factories, causing Lenin to ratify with the decree. The Bolsheviks cleverly proclaimed their regime a provisional workers and peasants government, promising that a freely elected constituent assembly would draw up a new constitution. The assembly was disbanded by Lenin's Bolshevik soldiers, which allowed him to start forming a one-party state. Lenin knew that Russia lost the war with Germany and all they wanted was peace at any price. Germany wanted all of the Soviet government's western territories. The Bolsheviks refused to lose all that territory, so Germany marched onto Russia with their armies, forcing Lenin to sign the Treaty of Brest-Lavosk, 
which gave Germany a third of its population, allowing Lenin to escape and extend the war. Russia was in full-fledged civil war in which 18 self-proclaimed governments challenged Lenin. The Bolsheviks were defeated by Poland, which halted them, but overall they had an amazing victory.